What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Welcome to another episode of the stream scene where we're talking about stream teams. Uh, I am joined here by my lovely co-host, the Hunter Wild. What's up, Hunter? How's it going? I suddenly have a lingering sneeze. <laughs> This is my oh, co-host he here, guys. For this. this is so good. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, so while Hunter works on that, <laughs> we will introduce our guests. Uh, we have Goobers and Markstrom, who are all—all all of us are on different teams. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting discussion. Goobers, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your channel, and what you're all about. So, uh, Goobers five and five, uh, Twitch, Twitter, all that good stuff. I um, am a variety caster. I'm obnoxious as hell. Uh, if you it's enter true. into the stream and you're immediately deafened, hey, welcome <laughs> to the goo. That's kind of that's what we do. Um, our community is a pretty strong one. Uh, very giving, very caring. We're crazy. We're all over the place, but uh, we take care of our own kind of a thing. So. Um, uh, yeah, uh, very, very variety caster, not just the video games, but I do other things like painting and cooking and literally anything that could be stream worthy or interesting to the community. So did That's you, awesome. did you say what team you're on? No, uh, I am on, would you kindly W I K T V. So. All right. Awesome. Hunter, are you feeling better? Uh, yeah, I, but sort of. I can still feel it kind of like back in there. Hi, I am the Hunter sneezer. Uh, <clears throat> Ooh, I'm doing pretty, pretty well today. I str literally, before we started, I was like, it's going to come to me. I'm going to say something weird. It's not going to land. That was what, that was what triggered was, was the nose. Yes. Um, I, I'm, um, deeply invested right now in Spider-Man. I like, I can't get my, can't get my brain off of it, but, uh, but I'm in, I'm in very good spirits and I got some decent sleep and I'm incredibly excited for today's for today's show, uh, focusing on uh, on stream teams. This is totally going out of order, but I, I kind of like this. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fundamental and vital aspect of, I, I think, um, doing, participating in broadcasting at, at literally any level. You can be uh, really fresh starting out and find yourself um, getting on board with the stream team. You could be at the absolute highest end of streaming and find yourself getting on board with a stream team. So uh, the things we'll be talking about today, presumably will be relevant to uh, you, no matter where you are and something that you'll carry through, whether you're just starting out uh, today, next week, or you've been doing it for quite a while. Now we'll move on to our second guest, <laughs> Markstrom. Please tell us who you are and what you're about. <sighs> Hunter, what's going on, man? Hi. Uh, <laughs> It is a pleasure to be on here. I appreciate you guys for having me, Hunter and Loco. Uh, my name is Markstrom. I'm a full-time broadcaster on Twitch. I uh, have been for a little over three years. I stream primarily survival shooters. I've been in that genre for quite some time. I stream everything. We switch it up, you know, from, from Dark Souls to single-player PS4 games. It really doesn't matter. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we, we typically stick to our, our main vein of survival shooters. Super community-oriented broadcast. Um, they're ride or die as I could, you know, as I could ever ask for. And uh, other than that, uh, I recently started a stream team of my own. I've been a part of quite a few over the years uh, as a member and less, a little less than a year ago, uh, I created the Marksman. So uh, nice. we'll get into that shortly. Yeah. But thank you. Actually, for like, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. We're excited to have you guys. And like I mentioned, we're all part of a different stream team. So I'd actually like to start with that first. Like, Let's go around and talk about like uh, the stream team that you're a part of, what you guys are about, what your focus is, uh, and how I guess you came to either join that team or form it. Um, I guess uh, Hunter, would you like to start? After I'm done wrestling this cat, <clears throat> I um, currently I am a member of the flagship. I was brought on. really good with time so i want to be super specific mm. here sometime this year um <laughs> after and I mean, i'm incredibly happy with uh with where i am and what what we're doing there this was after having co-founded the party i think late 2016 early 2017 
and it and it was uh, it was it was powerful and it was fantastic for a good while. But then we we disbanded after a bit uh, after after about a year after about a year we had to go we had to go our separate ways ways for a couple of reasons. Fortunately, none of them being um, uh, a matter of uh, toxic relationships or you know being being the, the aggravation that can happen when people are very close, both personally and professionally. Uh, so I've I've had a bit of a, a around the block with that creating and dissolving a team. Um, I, I was on another team or two before that, but sort of informally. And now I'm finding myself very deeply invested uh, in the in the flagship. What was the rest of the question, Loco? Uh, I guess like just what your goal, the goals of the team are. I guess goals goals of the team. Yeah. So this is the the the, the flagship itself is um, is more about the high end professional. Uh, business oriented side of things, uh, which is, you know, uh, getting uh, sponsorships and, and, and contracts and things like that and having a, a strong team cohesion that can work in a way that provides us all that that utilizes and leverages our individual strengths uh, collectively to get us to maximize some of those benefits at the same time as uh, as they love doing multi stream stuff, which which traditionally I'm kind of allergic to. Uh, but they they love doing the the, the multi stream stuff. It's like a lot of um, scum, a lot of uh, a lot of certainly a lot of shooters that uh, that they like to play together. I'm, I, I tend to be on the outside of that mostly because of low skill, uh, but uh, it ends up working really, really, really well, really well. So I'm very satisfied with it. Well, but what about so Loco? You've got Catalyst, right? Yeah, so I'm a part of Team Catalyst, and there's there's five of us. Uh, we established in January of 2017, I believe. Uh, it was just me and DJ Tech Live at first, who basically we were part of a stream team before then that was just kind of like a it was just kind of like a list of people that were just listed together as a team. And yeah. you know, DJ Tech Live and I wanted to do something more than that. We want we wanted to work together. We wanted to really like help each other. And uh, so we decided to set off on our own, form our own stream team, uh, and then grew to the five members that we have today um, in our Catalyst team. And yeah, basically our focus is kind of the same as the flagship where uh, we try to do community events. Our, our biggest focus is the community. So doing stuff together, uh, doing team streams, charity has been a big part of our oh, um, yeah. team stuff as well. Uh, we raised like $100,000 for St. Jude, which is like... A handful of us which is crazy um so yeah just doing like events and stuff together has kind of been our biggest focus um and just helping each other honestly just that's what it comes down to um so goobers what about you what about would you kindly so would you kindly has been around for many a moon uh would you kindly has been around for years i think it's coming up on about five years now is when how long would you kindly is technically wow really yeah Yes, Would You Kindly has been around for a very long time. I have not been on Would You Kindly that long. Uh, Would You Kindly was around for about two years uh, before a group of, uh, a group with me and Firecrow and Romcom and a whole bunch of other casters. There's about six of us were ready to start another team. And we reached out to OBG, the owners of Would You Kindly, and said, hey, would you like to join our team? We don't, you know, like, we know you have a team, but we're curious to see what you're doing. They're like, well, we're not really doing much with this one, but we're looking to do something so why don't you guys just use our existing infrastructure and build off of that That's and nice. uh and so we all agreed we make sure that everyone was good to go with their new rule set and we basically reformatted the team from the ground up um at the point where a whole bunch of people uh came in and uh for the last two two and a half years uh i think yeah two and a half ish years um this group has been on would you kindly growing it expanding it and uh the real focus of the team is um <clears throat> you know it's funny we started out we're like we're gonna be business-minded folks and we're gonna we're gonna go out and we're gonna do the business and it's just not that didn't happen but what did happen and i think was honestly a better thing that actually happened was that we have a family our our, our twitch team uh our communities we are just just like this we are family through and through um and uh you know that means that means a lot. Where you know I have a, I have a home in trusted streamers that I've known and worked with for years, literally years, um, and uh, and these are my best friends and these are my family. You know, um, and so what we're doing is we're taking that now 
and we're continuing to strengthen that family and also building out the potential for doing crazier and more different things uh as time goes on you know we've and 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 memes <laughs> a lot of really garbage memes um and uh yeah that's been that's been how would you kindly is we got a pretty good reputation for being um Meme, 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 me. yep, meme, <laughs> yep. Pretty, pretty freaking meme. Um, and how many people do you have in your stream team? There are, I believe, ten streams, but there are twelve casters because we have two dual casts. So, okay. um, plus actually, plus some staff as well. Okay. So. And Hunter, did you say how many people were in your team? No, I, 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 I think it's eight. I'm actually really bad with numbers. <laughs> I think it's eight, uh, and we we also have um one. Uh, overall manager who is not a broadcaster well uh, that's not necessarily true but uh it's uh, broadcasting is not is not her focus that's uh that's right. Nikki. that's the same thing with yeah. us and caroline yeah yeah okay right yeah absolutely yeah so i think i think i think it's eight plus one i believe okay yeah just what, trying what to get an idea mark? of the sizes yeah yeah um so the marksman is five members and originally it was four uh we I basically was, I was prodded very forcibly uh, by my good friend, Pebro, who has been on the show before, actually. Um, and he, we go back quite a ways um, to like really old Daisy days. -E days. And um, we'd always like discuss things, you know, privately off stream, just, you know, back and forth. You know, obviously you have a lot of broadcasters that end up being pretty close friends and confidants. And uh we basically had discussed the fact that, you know, neither of us have ever been like particularly happy with our stream team experiences up until that point. I've been casting for years, but you know, it's just, I never feel fulfilled or satisfied with what is going on um, within the team because I feel like, you know, uh, most, I would, I would say there's the, the majority of stream teams out there. Um, unfortunately, probably underutilize the tools that are available to them. Yeah, uh, and don't recognize the strength that they have in collaboration on a much, much like uh, heftier basis, um, and just ultimately what is possible uh, for a stream team that really focuses on making the most of it, um, because there's a lot there and a, and a lot, a lot just you know goes by the wayside. So um, he really, really prodded me uh, towards uh, creating my own. Because he, he, you know, he thought that there was value in, you know, what I had shared is my vision for a, a stream team. And uh, so I just, I kind of sorted through who I thought fit that vision and shot a couple of messages out. And uh, before I knew it, I had uh, some of my, you know, absolute closest friends and just people that I just really connected with on a lot of different levels. Um, you know, personally and professionally, uh, that I really wanted to work with on a, not even just like week to week basis, but day to day basis. Um, mm -hmm. and it has gone incredibly well. Um, I can't, I really couldn't be happier with the way things have gone over the last almost a year. I think it was November of last year. And, uh, we actually just expanded and brought in our fifth member, uh, Kyle, really? which we are very, 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 uh, Happy to have a board. It's been it's been really fantastic. So nice. Uh, that's basically where we're at right now. Now, do you have do you guys have a manager or any other like outside staff? Yeah. Um, so uh, I would say, as far as management is concerned, uh, a lot of that responsibility lies in my lap. Um, we, but I, I would say at the same time, like I don't feel the the stress or weight of that because we all help manage each other. Um, as far as, you know, our, our week to week is concerned, we meet w once a week for last night, it was two and a half, almost three hours. Um, we meet every Sunday night and we talk through, you know, our, our day to day, but basically the challenges that we're facing and we troubleshoot them together and we plan for the future. And, um, a lot of things go into those meetings. A lot, a lot of actually really quality work goes, goes into them. And, um, you know, as far as like, I, I take notes, but everybody helps everybody else and everybody ha brings a different perspective to the table and provides really great insight um, because we all have 
a lot of years under our belts and um, some way more than me. Uh, the Deadly Slob has been, you know, creating content on YouTube since like 2006. So Ooh, um, wow. that's a bit of heft. He actually, <laughs> that's a history. He actually create, helped create one of the very first MCNs uh, that is like really? the biggest MCN in the world right now. Wow. So, um, yeah, he, he has a pretty interesting, long storied history um, with content creation, which is, which is awesome to have his perspective. And yeah. uh, no Reface is one of the first like partners on Twitch. It's, it's, it's nutty, um, but they all yeah. bring such different things to the table, which is really, really valuable. Um, out, as far as outside help, we actually just picked up our first, uh, I guess how you would say, uh, stream team employee. Um, I, I hired one of our, uh, one of my moderators uh, for the sake of uh, organization, which has been yeah. very, very nice. Um, it ha she has done an awesome job, Leather Princess. She's very, uh, very, very helpful. And just one of those people that you know from the start, it's going to go well because she cares and she's dedicated and that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. But as so far as like, like really organization goes, like, like that's, that's big. Yeah. That's a very interesting thing because um, like we don't actually have a manager. We've definitely toyed with it in the past. Um, and it's probably something that we'll consider because it is, I think one of the biggest challenging, uh, one of the biggest challenges of a stream team is the communication and organization of a stream team. Mm -hmm. Now, Absolutely. all of us here, I believe, are full-time broadcasters, and the most people that are part of our teams are primarily focused on streaming. Is that correct? Would that be a yep. correct description of our team? So yeah, I think like one of the biggest uh, issues like or challenges is actually like being able to communicate and get things done on a regular basis when your full-time job is your stream and then now you're bringing on this extra responsibility and that is a lot more work than it looks to, yeah to so running. I, i'll i'll pop in here and quickly say um that is entirely the case one thousand percent uh so much so that when we rebuild the team and 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 discussed what our basically core tenants of the team is communication is the first one mm -hmm. communication is number one above everything else and we basically say like here's the deal like if you're not communicating with us you're not getting anything out of it because you're probably not doing anything if you're not communicating um and we're not getting anything out of you so if you're not communicating with us We'll just, we'll give you a heads up. We'll let you know that we need more from you. Um, and uh, if that's not something you can do, then let's just call it what it is here and, you know, like do our own thing and, and, and part ways you know, amicably. But we very clearly state this. And if yeah. you're, you know, doing a stream team and you're, you're starting one out or, or whatever you're doing and you're on there and you're, you are not setting communication as your number one tenant of, how the team is going to run you're doing yourself a disservice uh, and managing yeah. that communication is also incredibly challenging because it's more than just making sure that you're talking to each other it's the manner in which you're communicating about which subjects and through which channels if you have like one discord channel for the entire team your professional business stuff you got to get those contracts signed hey i need those assets uh give me your feedback on this that all gets that all disappears in the pile of, of memes or in the, hey, here, we're catching up with each other's lives. That can happen in 10 minutes. Everything else disappears. Actually having structured, uh, a structured channel set up can be very, very beneficial for that. But, but the different teams yeah. are going to work in different ways. What was it? I was going to say, we, we have, uh, from what I can see now, just in our team Discord, uh, we have five channels uh, yeah. that we all talk about. Oh, we in. easily have like double that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I we think I'm looking like... at like 14. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We can we forcibly condense ours because the more <laughs> there are, the less people look at them. That can so also we, be cumbersome. We force ourselves to condense, but yeah. yes, you you have Which to again have... is managing communication in both ways. Exactly. Both directions. Um, you know, it's as far as having a, a manager and stuff like that goes, it's it's hard because you ask a lot for it. And also it's hard because sorry, just pet peeve like people need to learn the difference between manager community manager and an agent and yeah. drives me nuts in this industry people say those things completely interchangeably and they are so different at what yeah. they do 
That we was actually talked about that last week. Yeah. You know, that, not was a la- that was the last shit was about management. Yeah. So anyway. Uh so yeah, what other ways do you guys like help facilitate communication with your team? Like, do you guys all do weekly meetings? Is that enough? Bi weekly for us. One hour bi weekly for us. But we so also twice have, a week or every other um, week. What? Every other twice week. Twice a week or every other yeah. week? Okay. Bi weekly. Every other week. Well, but bi-weekly is twice the a week. weird thing. Yeah, it can go <laughs> oh, both directions. Mu- uh, twice a week. It's, it's bi monthly yeah, so, It's so weird. That's, that's the only. Right, that's so right. confusing. Once every other week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we have that, but we also have um, Team Tuesday, which is a really important thing. And it's it's a it's actually a show. But the other aspect of Team Tuesday, the really important thing, is what happens after Team Tuesday. And this is the part that, like, this is the part that all casters on a team desperately need if you want to work as fluently and fluidly as a team together is decompression time as a group not streaming and that mm-hmm. time you're just like you get done with streaming you're like all right i gotta send emails i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go and then you never get the time to actually bond with your team which is so important you know yeah. um and so we have that we do not cancel team tuesday this is a saying that we have in wick in in our deep dark you know chats where nobody sees but it's basically we do not cancel team tuesday period like and no matter what it happens That's interesting you know um and we help each other out and we all we all fall through with that but the meetings afterwards are really important because it's all part of that it's all part of that communication process you know right yeah we uh we started doing the past couple months we started doing like a weekly team stream as well and it went really well like the community i think it's been like the biggest thing for our communities to like to see us play games together like um but uh we're actually like kind of reworking it because it's been hard to find a lot of like synchronized timing for things like getting everybody at the same page for the meeting or like you know being on schedule to like do a team stream and stuff and like literally it's been like you know, like DJ Tech Live's getting married and last week, you know, I was gone. And, you know, so it's like, um, it can be tough to like round everybody up together. But I, I find that even if like at least two of us can get together for the team stream, like that's fine. Like we just need, yeah. you know, some collective amount of people to hang out together, like at least once a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, for us, it's um, Sunday night meetings and they're anywhere between 90 minutes to two and a half hours. And pretty much everybody shows up every every meeting, which is nice. Um, because I, I, do, I do think that like that, that value is there. Um, everyone has problems throughout the week that they want everyone's input in. And they also have accomplishments that they want to share, uh, which is great. Um, on Wednesdays, we do the Marksman Play which is always great. Um, that's one of the main things also that our, um, that leather princess does for us is that she, um, she helps seek out games that would be appropriate, whether they're popular or not on Twitch, it really doesn't matter to us. Um, if it's a game that allows all of us to play together and have like a really particularly good time and just provide like, you know, crazy laughs for our community, that's, that's what we're after. And so we've done some pretty, pretty ridiculous games of the past and they're always you know uh, you, you, everyone everyone finishes the day with like tears in their eyes from laughing which is <laughs> god that is every team tuesday <laughs> it's know. just we always do it we're always just like okay we gotta stop it hurts man it hurts yeah yeah so um so yeah i would say like those are the two main things but other than that as far as communication is concerned you know we have our team discord we have a few channels in there um and then we have a like the you know uh Twitter DM uh, that we, anything that we have going on that we need something in particular from one another, then we hit that up. But other than that, I mean, the thing is, is like, we didn't, I didn't seek people out who I didn't already have like an incredibly close relationship with. Um, it just is all very natural. You know what I mean? Like, of mm-hmm. course, like these are going to be the people who are part of my stream team. Like it was a very obvious thing for me. Mm-hmm. And um these are people that I just already communicated with on a weekly basis or daily basis. So um, I think I've played, I've done my own version of the marksman play with deadly slob, just the two of us every single week, once a week for the last three years, probably. So wow. um, yeah, without fail. And our, and if we don't do it, our communities are not happy. 
I know that feeling. Yeah, all good stuff. So. so I've noticed that like all of our stream teams are pretty small. Like, I mean, you see these stream teams that have like hundreds of members. Like, what do you guys make of this? Is it like, is this intentional that like, we all small stream teams? Like, yes. do you think that big teams are <laughs> yes. effective? Yeah. If, uh, if, if you guys are on a stream team, all right, here, it's the two pizza rule. This is the thing. It's called the two pizza rule. All right. And they, they use this in like, you know, corporate jobs, you know, all over the place where it's, if a team is bigger than what two medium sized pizzas could feed reasonably. All right. I know I could eat two medium sized pizzas, but all right, <laughs> standard human standards. Um, then what, what happens is, is at that point, it becomes a extremely unwieldy and B you start forming clicks within that it's human psychology at that point. Um, the two pizza rule is so freaking important. And right now, you know, wick is at 10 streams and 12, 13 members. We're hitting that point. If uh -huh. you expand past that point, that's where, that's where you start getting major schisms in your, in your community. Now clicks aren't, terrible as long as there is cross communication still clicks where you can prefer to hang out with certain people whatever sure, sure. that's okay that's sort of like a natural kind of deviation but that's yeah it's, it's human psychology it just has you yeah. and so it's just it, but you don't want gigantic groups are so unwieldy you don't want high school lunchroom that's what you that's what you, or, or middle school lunchroom i mean i don't know it depends <laughs> on it depends on where you fit in that yes spectrum. and yes and your experience and that's what you don't want is, is like your, this group is the, is the core. And then like those people feel, you know, on the, on the outs, whether or not they actually are, you know, those, those things get, get troubling and problematic. So I'll say on this specific subject, uh, my team, the, the flagship made a huge accommodation for me that hurt them, benefited me, which in turn benefited them as I, as bringing me on board was, it was a thing. And this was their, the time of their meeting. Now, Loco knows this well, well about me. My schedule, uh, I, I, I just woke up before this stream started. I, I'm I late, late nights, right? I stream until the, the early morning. I've been like this for a long time. Before this, I was, I, was a, I was an artist and I would paint until the sun would come up. That's just kind of who I am. They were almost all on the East Coast meeting in the morning. So it was like right in the middle of my sleep was their meeting before they brought me on board. And I was like, that's the only hindrance right now is that I literally cannot make these meetings. They all double meet. They kept their original meeting time and added another meeting just for me. Nice. <laughs> which, which only recently I've been like, we should probably move our meetings around so that you guys don't have to meet literally twice a week. <laughs> That's way too much. That is way too much. It's even, it's even a bit much for me having to meet once a week because of all the other obligations that I have, all the other meetings that come in and all of the intense streaming and all of the management and trying to eat a meal here and there. That is one of the challenges of having a larger team, which we don't have. Fortunately, I don't, I, it sounds like none of us, none of us here have the size of team where you never be able to accommodate everybody. Or yeah, we got lucky. Yeah. I mean, we have we have twelve. We have twelve people. I mean, thir honestly, fourteen people. That it's growing. <laughs> that fourteen people. Yeah, right. So it's ten casts, twelve casters, two staff. So we have fourteen people that need to meet <laughs> once every two weeks, and somehow we got a time that works. We yeah. get an hour. We get an hour, and that way, like, like. You know, we used to have, like Mark said, like like we used to have like the three hour meetings and stuff like that. And then it got to the point where it's just like, guys, we we gotta we gotta stay focused. We gotta have yeah. an agenda when we meet yeah. and we need to crank through it. No extraneous bullshit. Yeah. People have streams. Like domestic Dan goes the minute until his stream in the morning on Saturdays, you know? And this goes back to the clarity of communication. I think you have to have goals, you have to have a vision for the little subsets of your of your team which can include the meetings themselves it's very easy to get caught up in the continued conversation which can be good and beneficial but a lot of us uh for very good reason as part of human nature we won't say no i gotta go 
a lot of us will continue to to get dragged along in that uh, almost wittingly. And so uh, a sort of a vision for how the meeting should be. If, if you need that decompression time, can you structure that for some other time and have the professional meetings here? 30 minutes, get in, get out, do the thing, and then have your team events where you guys are having fun together and then have the nobody streaming. We're just going to play games for two hours, you know, once a month, five hours, once or whatever that is like the, the team bonding moments. Can you structure these things out in a way that is going to uh, facilitate the best communication, the best bonding uh, and the best kind of relationships that you can have as a team? It's yeah. very challenging. And at the end of the day, like, you know, we're talking about bigger stream teams getting more and more difficult to manage, but it yeah. does, it does, uh, you know, really depend on what you want from a stream team. And yes. we can go into talking about like yes, what absolutely. kind of expectations you should have for a stream team and what kind of things you can get out of it. Um, but like, if you just want to just be a part of a giant list of people and talk to some people and make some friends and maybe find people to work with within that team, like, that's totally cool. That's like, that's mm -hmm. your aim. If, if you really want to like have a more like family type relationship with a, a couple of streamers, like then you're going to look to start small, right. And, and look to form like uh, a team with people that you trust and that you've gotten to know pretty well. Uh, so I guess like we could talk about that. Like, like what do you look for in, in forming or look like joining a team? Uh, and like, how do you know when you're ready for a stream team? Mm. I'm going to let one of you guys answer. Cause I'm going to pull a hunter. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I think I think that with anything in life, uh, everything should be you know you, you should figure out what your expectations are of it. Like what what are yeah. you thinking out of it? Like you know if you don't define the reason, uh, then there's no sense in going through the process, right? So um, that for me, like after like I said, being on like multiple stream teams where I just felt unfulfilled. Um, with, not that they didn't serve any purpose, you know, I, you know, I had good experiences. There weren't negative experiences. It just um, wasn't doing it. I think also like at, at that point, especially with the very first one I joined, I think the name was the Wastelanders and it was hosted by, you know, an awesome broadcaster, uh, by the name of wasted user. Um, he was massive in the Daisy category ages ago, um, once upon a time and, and actually came back to streaming, which is awesome. Um, but he had this like really widespread group of, of people, like so many content creators were part of the Wastelanders, but it was a really great way to meet other, other broadcasters. And I think that's yeah. ultimately how I ended up meeting a lot of my friends within the survival shooter community. And, and I'm still, you know, I'm very close with a lot of them today. That so sounds very familiar. It definitely, it definitely served its purpose. Um, and it, it was a great network. It really was. It was a great network. And, you know, there was a couple of others along the way, but um, I, I don't think that I had any, I didn't have the right amount of experience at that time to understand like what could be gained from mm -hmm. a stream team. I just didn't know, you know what I mean? So you, as you learn, you start to figure out, you know, you start to narrow down, like, what are, what are my needs? What, what can I work towards? Do I have a vision for this? And, um, is there value in trying to put that time aside for it? Because again, ultimately, right. That's a, it's a use of your resources, um, yeah. your time, ultimately, especially if you're thinking about making one yourself, um, for sure. in which you like bring upon that responsibility. Um, so yeah, I would say that like, that's, I think that's a process that probably is not unique whatsoever for for broadcasters the more the more you learn the more you figure out about the industry then you are are able to more handedly formulate something that that suits where you want to go so well, that's interesting yeah. uh, so it sounds like okay so I, I remember at possibly the first twitchcon main menu had a what do you call the thing that you get up and you talk to everybody's out there? The panel, panel, they had panel. a panel. <laughs> that, was, that was stream team oriented. And I believe I remember Morag talking about trickle down stream and on a stream anomics, trickle down, trickle down stream anomics. <clears throat> uh, what? <laughs> like, uh, that, the, the concept doesn't work. Just like, it's just, 
more like picking the just <laughs> this I mean, it works, though. it works though. Like going, going back to like you know Reagan era economics, the yeah. trickle down, the trickle down stream economics. Right. The idea in the in some of these larger teams is that you have some big dogs at the top, and you have hundreds of broadcasts, or sometimes hundreds of broadcasts, like these massive teams. And the idea, or initially, is that uh, you know everybody can join in and hopefully get a little piece of that pie that the big dogs are, are are pulling in. You know, maybe they can do something for the team. You get that point of orientation. It's like, oh boy, I'm on a team with God, Lyric. I mean, that's not going to happen. But if this were a massive thing, you know, and, and he would, it's like you make that kind of orientation. You have that kind of connection, and you're hoping to get something out of that merely by virtue of of that uh, base level of connection there's not really a lot of there's no there's virtually no cohesion there's not a lot of um team orientation uh, team team events and stuff um that was sort of what my first foray into stream teams was i'm trying to remember what it was called but it was something similar to this wasteland idea it was it was a oh, fallout zone it was called the fallout zone um, and it had a, a bunch of broadcasts on it. And I think this was probably one of the better teams in terms of having a ton of people and still having communication and coordination. This is before discord. Um, I'm still friends with several of the people from the team, including Disney disaster and not Jen, a uh, bunch of, bunch of people that we, we, we carried on relationships, but that was my, that was my first, uh, my first orientation towards stream teams. And I think to Mark's point, this is, this gave me perspective for what I then wanted to have in a team moving forward from there. Um, I, I, having had that experience, I could go like, well, you know, I mean, it was, it was, it was cool with this and this obviously was missing these other things that I was really hoping to get out of that sort of sitting down and trying to get some kind of clarity for what you really want out of a team is in some ways only going to be possible by virtue of having experienced what being on a stream team is. And I think that's probably one yeah. of the easiest ways to do it. Yeah. Where you don't have a huge obligation. You're not going to mess mean, anybody's stuff up by, you know, not knowing what you're doing. Like welcome to <laughs> welcome to anything on starting on Twitch. Yeah. You got to exactly. try it. You have right. to try it. You try that. Like, I was on a, a microscopic stream team that lasted like a couple months. And I was just like, it's, this isn't really working that much. And, uh, and then things happened and wick and I'm like, well, here's the problems that I identified what I had an issue with, identified what I liked with it. Like all of that stuff appeared after I had experienced it firsthand. Um, yeah. you may get lucky and your first dream team may be sure. 10 out of 10. Great. Good job. <laughs> you did it. Good choice there, bud. But in the meantime, like, don't be afraid to try it in this yes. sense of fail i mean like don't be afraid of failure just just take just write that on your freaking wall yeah don't Absolutely. be afraid of failure because you learn from it and you become so much better so quickly when you're willing to fail as trendy as it is uh the i i totally buy into and i that why well, i mean even back to the uh, ancient greeks this 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 is not new fail forward yeah. right that's the them's the new synergistic terminologies. Fail forward. Uh, I, I, going looking back at uh, at my last stream team, the party which I co-founded, and then we dissolved uh, a year later. I wouldn't change anything about that experience. That gave me an intense amount of clarity. I loved uh, going through it and what all we got out of it, and coming away from it, like being being able to walk away from it, and then using that in my in my next experience. I would definitely make the recommendation, the same recommendation, uh, that your first stream team doesn't have to be your last stream team. You don't have to yeah. look for, it's not a marriage. You're, you're not, you're not looking for like the one and only that you're going to be stick. You, you, you get in there and like, you know, dabble, it's a dating pool in professional terms. You know, it's, it's make, make a bunch of friends, see what it's like, experience it. If it works out fantastic, if it doesn't, well, you've still got next one. Another one. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, for sure, like we, I, we all have come from experiences that just like weren't enough. And that's why we all like basically like, you know, started or were in the founding steps of like our own teams. Yeah. And um, I really like the point that Markstrom made about like, like realizing that it is a commitment, like it is actually like you're going to want to or need to spend time outside of 
your main focus, which is your channel, and actually like dedicate time to helping your teammates, talking to them, and you know, some of that time that you spend on your stream, you're gonna have to move away to the team, realizing that obviously it's gonna be something that helps everyone as a whole, but it's still like it's you know, it's not for everybody, and if you don't like to like play games with other people really, and you're just kind of like doing your own thing, like stream team is not for everybody, and it doesn't mean That's like definitely true too. you not. Like, you not being on the stream team doesn't mean you're less likely to succeed or anything. You don't need a stream team. Mm -hmm. So very true. I mean, it, uh, as Lois said, know what you're getting into. Know why you're doing it. Why yeah. are you looking for a stream team? Why do you need to find new people to hang out with? What is it that you're going to get? Well, if it's to not play games with anybody and grow your channel by just you being good at a game, what do you need a team for? Just go play more video games. You got this. Like, whatever, man. You know, but if you're looking for a group of individuals and a, and a larger group to be a part of, to drive forward for something and have be a part of something that's doing things that nobody else on Twitch is doing, all that good stuff. Yeah, team would be pretty good for you. So what kinds of things can you get out of a team? Like, what do you, what, what, what are the, I mean, I guess it's a two, it's a two-parter. We're already talking about, like, the types of, teams that exist but really you can just mix and match it's like super modular you can make whatever you want out of this so like what what are we really like shooting for in a team what are the what are the variations that we can have there i assume we've got a consistent group of multi-stream you know partners right people that regularly you can you can pull in and stream with uh together uh you've obviously got the professional side of things that can that can exist there being able to pool your numbers and and go out to a potential sponsor and go like hey this is what we have this is what we can do would you be willing to drop some money on us so that we can do a thing and they're like oh yeah a team that does all you you guys do this stuff together and you've got these numbers great good to go um yeah, yeah i would it, say like another thing is like a big thing for us is the cross-pollination of our community it's absolutely like, we can say like okay there's five of us here are five streams. Like, if you like my channel, you're going to like my teammates' channels. Like, and yeah. that's, it worked out really well because of the way that we brought our members together and, and how our streams are run. So um, that's honestly the biggest benefit, I think, is just, like, saying, like, this is a another home. Like, this is, like, 24-7 content. Like, I'm done streaming, but my teammate's streaming, and you're going to like her stream because she's awesome, too. So mm -hmm. I think it's particularly important that if you are a community oriented broadcaster, that your team is equally community oriented because Definitely. that aids in that cross pollination tremendously. Um, people feel at home because there's faces there that they recognize. You know, I think oftentimes successful Twitch streams are deemed successful because the exact same people are there every single day. Mm -hmm. and it creates this, this sense of community and commitment and people enjoy that. People want that consistency. They want to be able to get up every single day or be at work and jump in the stream and say hi to everybody and have everybody in the chat say hi to them back. You know what I mean? Yeah, and if totally. you have that for five channels, that's mm -hmm. a thing. And uh, it only strengthens it tremendously. So um, I just, I think that... Uh, Ultimately, com community-oriented broadcasts flourish more from stream teams. Um, yeah, I, I think I think you can extend that out to the the um, physical stuff too, right? Like like TwitchCon team meetups. Everybody from all the teams can get together. Or no, everybody from all the teams, everybody from all the streams on the team uh, can get together in in that uh, kind of situation too. Like it becomes a, a broader kind of meta community in that regard. TwitchCon. Yeah. That was actually. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. It's okay. I, I was gonna say, yeah, the 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 team meetups are. They're uh, they're great. They're great, and they're ridiculous. We got brought about uh, about like four liters of RC cola uh, during ours, and uh, yeah, there's just it's it's just a it's like the pinnacle moment where the community is just like, all right, let's get a look at like how how are we doing as a team? Like, does our community, do, does our community reflect what we want them to reflect? Do, or are they here? Are they as diehard as, as we hoped? And, and on those moments in which, you know, 
we definitely uh that's not yet sponsored casper thank you um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's in those moments in which you can finally see, like, holy crap, like, like physically see, like, all of these people getting together, just yep. getting around, like, you know, and hanging out. Just, it's so great. It's so great when that happens, you know. And there's nothing wrong with, like, you having a team meetup in place of your own meetup. You know, like yeah. some people do both and that's fine as well if you want to do that. But it's also not a problem if you do one big meetup mm -hmm. and, you know, that's that's the that's the meetup, you know, because mm -hmm. everyone who's there to see you is there to see you and they also get everyone else as well. And which is just like everything else on a stream team, you know, yeah. and, and that kind of dynamic is really, really good to have on a team where it's just like, no, oh, let's, let's do this together. Like we're, we're a cohesive unit. Let's work as one, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. At, it's great at conventions. Um, we having just started in November, uh, PAX East was massive for us. Like we had, you know, I would I would say 40 plus community members in addition to us and our families like travel uh, for the sake of meeting up with everybody and just having that opportunity to see all of us together. Like it just makes it so much more impactful. They, they gain so much more out of their, you know, con experience if, you know, we can all go out and rent a place out and you know, yeah. take, over, take over an outside patio for, and they'll just all be together. And also share that economic burden, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Instead of, instead of like one streamer, one person right. having to like try to rent out a place, it's you, 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 you can spend. Yeah, we have, we have a wick house for, uh, for right. TwitchCon, you know? Yeah. One of our massive goals uh, for, you know, we, you know, we obviously are goal oriented, I think, as anyone should be. Um, but the one of our like short term goals, like after forming was to have our like uh, have a Twitch team meet and greet all together, like to like take a block together. Yeah. And, uh, we were able to do that at, at, uh, at PAX East. And that was like wildly nice. enjoyable. So yeah, man. Um, Congrats. That was, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah really that fun. is big. It's a good, time, it's a so. good feeling. <laughs> it was. It was. And it's nice to just like, I don't know, not not only like look back on that, but uh, but hopefully, you know, we we bring up one or two more people as we go, you know, from year to year. So, yeah. Yeah. Was, That's actually kind of what I want to talk about next is uh, have you guys added members to your team? And if so, like, what is the process to bring in new members to your guys' teams? Yeah, it's um, someone who just did that. I can go ahead, or you can go. Yeah, ahead. Go for it. Go for it. Um, that we just, uh, I would say maybe three weeks ago, uh, brought on board Cotton. Um, he is no stranger to our communities um, by any means. He also streams Escape from Tarkov and pretty much every other shooter under the sun. Um, but that wasn't the reason that we brought him on board wasn't the similarities and what he broadcasts. It was the way that he interacts with his community. That makes that, that is the defining characteristic I would say of any of us is that we are not having a good time unless our community is having a good time. It wasn't oh, a yeah. successful cast unless <laughs> like everybody is, you know, really like having a good laugh. If there weren't, really funny moments then you kind of messed up that day <laughs> you know what i mean thinks uh, i'm there to entertain them no 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 <laughs> the um it's just the way that he is able to create this atmosphere of just hanging out is incredible and it's something that you know we all really respect from him and it just made the decision really really clear so mm -hmm. um and it, it was one of those things like uh he wasn't happy in the situation that he was in and he had changed his situation to not be in a stream team at all anymore. And like we had discussed as a team ages ago um, that we would like to have him on board, but he joined this project um, that didn't work out for him. And uh, so we always just kept him in mind. And, and I don't think even back then that we were necessarily ready. There was a lot of things that we felt we needed to, as a four man group, accomplish um before before it was even worthwhile to bring someone on board before because we recognize the fact that like it's really important to be able to offer something in return for somebody's commitment right because we do demand a commitment you know what i mean like there yep. is that clear set in stone you know line in the sand like 
you're crossing this line, you know, there, there are certain things that we expect from you. Um, but in, in, in the best of ways. And, uh, yeah, he's gone above and beyond doing that. And it's been a pleasure having him on board. Uh, and then as far as like moving forward is concerned, um, there are, you know, there's, I mean, there's certain like criteria that we discuss, you know, um, I think for us in general, I think it's really important that the, that the person like, cause when we formed one of our members, wasn't a partner. Um, it Pebro, I think at the time was, uh, averaging like maybe like 30 or so viewers. I think that maybe like one of the things actually loco that he was on the, it was a while ago that he was on the, um, the stream scene, but, um, it was like during his like path to partnership and uh, he has absolutely like flourished since then. And nice. I think the team has had an awesome impact on that. Now he has, you know, a gigantic community and um, has really, you know, filled into the kind of broadcaster that we all knew that he, that he was, you know, we just, he needed, he needed, uh, you know, that kind of, that structure, that was like one of the things that he was just missing was that structure for him. Sure. And um, it worked out really great. And I think moving forward, um, you know, I think we want somebody who, we would want somebody who is oh, like a full-time broadcaster for the sake that they, there's something a little bit like more on the line at that point, you know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah. There's that, that extra hunger and drive when you are literally <laughs> paying all of your bills with with broadcasting and i think but i and it's not even for the sake that like that it's like this it's not for the sake of necessity it's just like we want that drive that is the drive that we're after no matter how it you know transpires right i don't um, want to bring somebody onto the team and just you know like hope that they coast right (laughs) overall like overall the big thing to think about real Big lesson. Expanding doesn't mean growth. Yes, absolutely yeah. true. Expanding doesn't mean growth, people. You don't just have a better team because you've got more people or bigger people. Doesn't mean crap. Yeah. It, you are only a team when you work as a team. And if you don't work as a team and you've got 30 people who are the top 100 streamers, who gives a shit? You're not a team. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so... That's something to think about, but um, I was going to say to Mark's point about not having partnered streamers on there, you know, let this be known. Like this isn't a conversation specifically to partnered streamers. Yes. Yeah. A partnered streamer has to start a, uh, start a team, but I have been on multiple teams in which they're started by a partnered streamer. They wanted to do something good and they brought in people who are partnered or not. And I mean, the biggest, best example is the fact that, when I joined about three months later, we brought on Rob and Dan, who's in the chat right now, uh, to dual cast. And they have been, they, they just got partnered like two months ago. So they're the awesome. last, the last team. Yeah. It was a huge deal. We've been pushing them. That's awesome. For a while. We thought for the longest time, they, they have made somebody at Twitch angry and they were just like, no, nah, <laughs> screw these guys. But uh, they just had to keep grinding it out, and they uh, they finally hit it. I mean, like I wasn't partnered when I was when I joined WIC, and neither was I think Farrington uh, Empire yeah. as well. Um, and within you know, like we're, the amount of time that it's taken us to get here, we've we have all been partnered, and it's a lot of it is because we push each other, we push each other all the time, and that's part of what a team is. You know, Robin yeah. Dan pushes me as much as I push them. You know, yeah. and that is an indication of a team, not just, I got this many viewers. I got this many viewers. Yeah. Also keep in mind that like the whole like Twitch partner thing, like that's only if you want to form a stream team through the Twitch's yes. system, which oh, is yeah. a yep. whole exactly. like, not even fully developed feature. So it's like, you could still form a team and be Absolutely. a team without like having the partner be able to create the team right. on Twitch. And I think on Mixer, I think anyone can create a team. So keep that in mind as well. Yep. The actual team page functionality is relatively useless, I find, yes. in, in all fairness. Um, it's just yeah. a full page for everyone. And, and yeah. it's just a, a team on Twitch. A team on Twitch is more powerful in the sense of what you do with it rather than the actual, right. like, I am on Twitch. Absolutely. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say, like, people, you know, how many times do you get somebody who comes into your chat who asks what game you're playing? If they're not looking at what game right. you're playing. <laughs> they're definitely yeah. not looking at what stream team you're it's on. Like right I put it in the title. It's right, right underneath. There. You can literally see it too. I'm on the pause screen. 
Yeah, nobody's um, reading the marksman. So. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so for Catalyst, our process, like we, we only have five members as well. And um, it's interesting because it's like, you know, we, we have friends that have wanted to be on the team. We've got a lot of inquiries, but I think for us, like we really make sure that their channel meshes with our channel, even if we're like we're friends with them, like, you know, we're buds with them. But it's like we still need to look at this like it still is like a business thing. Right. So we still look at like we do look at numbers to make sure like they're in around our range, like we're not carrying them or they wouldn't carry us or anything like that. Um, and really it just, it comes down a lot to the community as well. Like, do they, have they rated us and host us? Do they come by and say, hi, like, you know, do they Certainly. like, cause you know, a lot of times like we'll get requests and they're from people we know, but like, I've never seen them in our channels at all. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That's the, um, that's the big thing as far as like bringing people on. It's just like, you get those requests to be like, I'd love to like talk to you about joining the team. And it's like, okay we're not really expanding right now or if we are we're really being very picky right now so right we'll talk to you in a month stick around to the team get to know the team and you know raid host and it'll return to you whether you're exactly. on the team or not it'll return to turn to you but you need to show your support to the team to show that you're in it for the team and 9 times out of 10 admittedly 9 times out of 10 guys you don't see it yeah they don't, don't exactly and, like and it's not it's not a knock on their character or anything like that it has nothing to do with like who they are it's just like their priorities might not be exactly what you were looking for that's okay yeah I or they may not realize that, how serious your team is yeah, it's a matter of inexperience a lot of the times like i totally had like the notion like i i think when i was much smaller admittedly like i sent a message to i mean it was it was like streams that i watched but like I was a member of community you know what i mean uh, I've since become friends with this person and it's funny at this point, but I remember sending like a message like regarding, you know, like, you know, like, how does this work? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, I inquiring, not being like, Hey, can I be on your stream team? Yeah. But, you know, uh, but you know, as tastefully as possible, but even, you know, looking back on it, it's, it's, it's laughable to an extent, right? Because they had a very serious team and like, you know, mm -hmm. I just had no idea what yeah. the extent was of their work. Right. And the whole thing to me is just like very much so a process. Like all of broadcasting is such a learning process. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that like I'm still learning every single day and you have to yeah. be into that and you have to be understanding that like the amount of work that people put in at this, like at the point where, you know, you are paying the bills with it. It's just like, that's, it's, it's extensive and it doesn't happen overnight. So yeah. um, you shouldn't ever feel dejected if, you are not the right fit for a stream team that you look up to or want to join. You know what I mean? I, like I, yeah. I think that's a good, like that. a take home point too, is like, if you're looking to join a team, like make an effort to like, you know, be a part of that community or part of those streams beforehand, because like what most, if you want to be part of a team and you don't know them, like why would, why would you want to be a part of that anyways? Right. Like just because mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. so think about like, you know why these teams are formed and if you're looking to join something like make make an effort or commitment to like actually like demonstrate that you're serious about it and not just like inquiring to someone random and, and it, th that just goes down to like networking 101 like like be genuine you know all anyone wants is to just have these genuine connections and that's how the team gets formed is with people that you get along with and that you're close with so um like spend time and and researching like what the teams are about if you are looking to join one i would say or, like just i would say with busting. that one is basically just always remember that just because you don't have the thing that says the marksman the flagship catalyst wik whatever team just because you don't have that little thing there which again we've already talked about the fact that <laughs> it's not really that powerful it does, um, yeah just because you don't have that doesn't mean you're not part of the community and inherently the family of that team. There are so many casters that are in the WIK community. I could list a ton of them right now who are not members of the team, who are absolutely part of the stream community. And we, we support them. Like the best one I can think of, Smooth Hammer Gaming. Smooth mm -hmm. Hammer Gaming is a really cool guy. He's a really wonderful guy. Farrington showed me him a year, like a year ago. And he's just always kind of circled around yeah. the, 
the community and he's just like, like hey guys, how's, right? Like, exactly, right? You like Spoon? I know that guy. You know who he is. I know who he is. been doing it for two years. Exactly. And the fact that he doesn't have the thing that says W-I-K on it, but he's a good dude and he's a good caster, he still gets support from us. Yeah. So yeah. just because you don't need that little badge that says, I am part of that team. Like, and I think to this point and to the earlier point, you d- as much as you need, people look at the formalization way too much. Whether or not you have a partnered broadcaster, like I've, I, I have helped form a team that I was that I abandoned because somebody asked me to because they didn't have any partners who were going to be on the team. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I understand that direction though. Get, just getting the formalization kind of done, but. If you have an informal, a technically informal team that's just a group of people and you're talking to each other and you decide that you want to be a team and you simply create a basic website for yourself, you're already pretty much above most stream teams. You did it. Congratulations. You have a new team. (laughs) You don't don't need the thing to click on. You need the spirit of being a team, the spirit of of team matitude. Yeah, that's the one. Of teammate attitude. Teammate attitude. <laughs> please, somebody, please don't, make get that stop. get that domain right now. Thank you. <laughs> if, if you if, if you seriously get into WordPress and you just make a make a uh, a website for your informal team and nobody's partnered, you're already seriously you're you're doing more than a lot of stream teams that ha- that are full of only partnered broadcasters have done. Yep. You can do this without any formal and official backing participation with the Twitch stuff at all. And yep. you know what's even better than that? That allows you to uh, cross between platforms. You want to have a team that's got people from Mixer? Hey, cool. Got a website? There you go. Done. That's not going to be clickable on uh, on on Twitch's site. It's not going to be clickable on, on Mixer's site. You put it in your info panels. Boom. That allows you to have the control. Step out of the boundaries of formality and you can you can take a lot more control over your team and your stream in general. Yep. I think one of the biggest benefits is like what everybody brings to the table with regards to, and I've mentioned this is experience. Like everybody has like a different background, everyone has different strengths and skills. Maybe one person's like particularly good at audio, one person's particularly good at video, one person is like this YouTube guru. You know what I'm saying? One <laughs> yes. person does mobile yes. games and i'm like i'm drawing from my own team at this point but like uh you have to like you have to keep it diverse because you guys will when you can share that like common like uh wealth of knowledge with each other like you you grow you progress you learn so much faster as a team and i think that's where like inherently a lot of the value of these teams come from because not every single person is going to be the jack of all trades. Like it takes so much longer to be able to figure all those things out on your own. But if you have someone who like truly cares about like your growth as a broadcaster and the quality of your content, and they see something that you can be doing differently and they're just happen to be really good at that. And it takes no time at all for them to just share that information with you. Cause mm-hmm. again, if you're not on a, if you're not on a team, there isn't a whole lot of sharing going on out there outside of loco's amazing website uh I, which i've admittedly used many 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 <laughs> times um throughout the years honestly um that's awesome yeah tr- truly because there's nothing there is nothing else out there for the most part that are that is like you know giving quality information to broadcasters that just want nothing more than to learn and grow right so um these teams can really facilitate that process absolutely Awesome. And uh, we'll start taking questions for our Q&A, guys, if you guys want to post them in the chat. Um, we did get one like just recently from Gamer Lives who asked, uh, would it even be good for a new streamer to try and do a stream team? Again, I guess it depends, it depends on what the word do means there, honestly. Make and or join, I guess? I wouldn't recommend making one. Yeah, I would. I would. If you're... If, here's what I always say to people as far as if you're a new streamer and you are six less than six months into streaming, just do whatever the hell you want. Like, <laughs> just don't even think about it. Do whatever the hell you want. And the reason I say that, the very there is a reason I say that. It's not just because it's like, well, I have fun. Who cares? <laughs> no, the reason is, is that if you're six months, less than six months into streaming, you need to know why you love Twitch. Yes. You need to know why you love streaming and what makes streaming so much fun for you 
is it you need playing to games know if you even want to keep streaming oh, what was that <laughs> That you need to know if you even want to keep streaming. Like, yeah, you're exactly. still learning so much about streaming. Like, I I think as a newer streamer, it's not worth like trying to make or form one because you're just adding so much extra to what like you need to learn how to stream first. Like, yeah, you make just, friends. You're adding Networking way too much is extra always stuff. part of streaming, no matter if you're on a team or off a team. So yeah. you should go be streaming and networking and just getting to know people. Just make some friends. Like. I like right. I still have friends now. I'm in Seattle and I used to live in Iowa because of the friends I made in the first 6 months of streaming. Le legitimately. They are they are the reason I am out here. And those connections are so important to make and sometimes can be looked over when you're worrying about crap. We missed so many people at the meeting today. We wanted to do this event. It didn't work out. Ah, you know. Focus on having fun. But as far as a new caster trying out streaming if you're past that point what do you want do you want a good group of people have you identified an awesome group of people that are already on a team you're already friends with them well if that's the case sure give it a shot don't kill yourself over it like if it's not working just call it what it is and you know do your own thing or if it is working but you want more out of it and you're at a place where you're like no i'm ready to commit to this like with some time in. Again, it all depends on what you enjoy and what drives you on Twitch. And if that is a good working team, then more power to you, you know, give it a shot. But don't be afraid to fail, you know? Yep. Agreed. Um, our next question good. comes from DJ Does Linux. On the business side, did any of your teams accept investment slash seed money or were they all funded ad hoc slash personally? Ad hoc. To another interesting topic as well that I sort of wanted to, to touch on. Is, is there a buy-in? Are you paying management? Uh, are you guys paying yeah. into a pool for services that you use, like website, going with a Gleam.io professional account, things like that? Um, for the most part, it, it's in my experience and from people that I've talked to, uh, it seems to be when something is needed, uh, everybody's talking about it, essentially voting on it, even before the formal formation of the team. And uh, you'll all just pull your 36 bucks individually together to get the art done for your branding, et cetera, or to get the, get the website developed. That seems to be the standard. Um, but I don't necessarily expect that to be the case all the time, for sure, and certainly yeah. not moving into the future. I mean, if you, like it literally costs zero money to start a stream team. Mm -hmm. It's when you want it to be like serious and high level, that's when it costs money. Like making a website, making graphics, getting a manager, like putting on events and stuff, doing team based giveaways, the charity yeah. stream, stuff like that. Um, that's when it starts to get a little bit complicated. Um, I think for us, like we have like a spreadsheet where if like someone will cover an expense and then we'll kind of sheet it down. Uh, we have like a team yeah. store, so like the, that funding just gets tracked and allocated to that. Um, it's not a hundred percent accurate. It's a little messy. Um, definitely would benefit from having someone like actually monitor it. But um, yeah. it's also some one of those things where it's like, okay, like you know, we we sub to each other, we support each other. It's kind of like we don't have expenses where it's like, okay, like we need to keep track of this stuff. It's all just kind of here and there. Yeah, Stuff I would say like the biggest, the yeah. biggest investment is honestly your time. Like yeah, anything. certainly. It's not, you know, there's not some massive monetary cost. Trust me, I think a lot of us would, would you know, not that it would be rewarding, but if we could throw some money at some problems to just make them go away, like that's great. But uh, <laughs> yep. I would throw money at problems and more spawn. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. Fertilizer. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not really a financial thing. Like when there are things that we have to, you know, um, show out for, it's, it's literally, I, I think typically like our process is, um, I bring it, I bring it forward and then it's like, I take care of it or, or, you know, uh, at least up front. And then what ends up happening is everyone's like, yeah, let me throw this at you. Make sure that, like that's, you know, I, I do my part and that's, that's it. It's not, it's not super formal. Um, and honestly, like we don't have enough expenses that make it super formal. And I say yeah, like, sure. we have seen so much 
progress and growth together and individually as a result of the team without having to necessarily worry about a whole lot of that. So it's really like a very, I would, I would argue that it's like a very minute point. It can be teams in general. Uh I think it's an important consideration. Uh, I think incorporation is an important consideration uh, at, at, at some point. And it's uh, remarkably easy if all you want to do is just get that paperwork done and have incorporation as a technical detail, a legal and technical detail uh, feature of the stream. That, that's pretty easy to accomplish. And it allows you to do certain things that are really good. Like if you're going to be going out uh, and getting... Um, you know, sponsorships as a team that allows you to have a team account, which you otherwise can't have uh, legally, and you get to pool that money, and then it gets to be distributed appropriately from there. You also get to pay out uh, your, if you have a manager or you have people performing management roles for which they're getting paid, whether it's just the streamers who divide uh, those roles up or whatever, that can all come out of that core account as well. Likewise, with signing agreements, you can have somebody um, who represents the team, that one person can sign for your sponsorship deal or a contract or whatever you need to do. That can become a very powerful tool and a very useful one. And that takes some money because they're in co incorporation costs, but, uh, but that, that's a pretty easy one to, to achieve. And it's and easy to like, make that money. That's also like, like again, like 90% of the people who are going to watch this, like if you don't already have an incorporated team, the chances are you're, and this isn't an, like any offense to you guys, you're a ways out. I've been streaming for years and it's only recently been a thing, right? And it's yeah, yeah, sure. the top 10 teams out there are the ones concerned about like, oh, but it's not something you have to wait for. That... You, don't, you don't have to wait for a corporation. Consider how easy it is. And it's not sure. like once you become incorporated, you then have to perform at the absolute highest level. You can be the laziest incorporated team in the history of the world. Absolutely. It, Still Absolutely. totally functional, and we'll just kind of cover you in some legal, legal, legal ways. Don't feel obligated to do it, but you're also not going to hurt because you because you did it. Right. In all likelihood. Right. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it, it's definitely like most stream teams are not at that level. Not even the near vast that majority. Level. Not well, even, I'm not even necessarily at that the level, level, but they're not doing it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, but it's still like I mean, I would just compare our stream teams to like Nerd Fusion would be like. Yes. what i would say is the corporate example of a absolutely team, right? like they yes. are a company they have mm -hmm. offices like and they work together to do sponsored streams together um i i i don't see our team like doing that anywhere in the near future anything like that sure yeah that it would definitely be needed to get to even well, start and, thinking and about doing that is that, like nerd fusion was started as a super group as mm -hmm. as it as it was already every one of the yeah. team was already roughly a thousand plus viewers every stream That's true. you know and was totally fine on their own and they're just like yeah let's make a team and see if we can make it bigger and better and hey it works for them you know but yeah the From staff its inception, and everything that they need for exactly. all that is astronomical compared to 99.9 percent .9 of the teams or groups out there you know from its inception it also had salaried management and yes. stuff you know yes. that's it's a, a little different from our yeah. teams. Eh. So, a little, little bit, a little bit. <laughs> That's true. Um, next question we have from Chef, who says, how do you go about kicking someone from the team? Is it a team decision, or does it come down to the person who started the team? So kicking already implies that y'all aren't on the same page about this. Right. I feel I'm like if you're a small team, like, most decisions you come across together and usually if it's not working out like that person probably doesn't want to be on the team anyways yeah so i don't think it, like i mean we haven't had any forcibly removed incidents so it's pretty we've it's had, pretty, pretty rare unfortunately we've had we've had a couple people that like as exactly as you said loco like it boiled down to that it was just like for us uh, because there's no this isn't a job so there's no salary where you're just like, I want to stay here because, you know, I'm getting paid, but I'm not doing my work, right? That's not the case. It's like, if you're not putting in anything, you're not getting anything out of it, you know? And if there is something like, for example, if somebody were to take a Team Tuesday from us, but then they're just like, they don't do anything at all except for Team Tuesday stuff, then we might have an issue, you know? Because then it's just like, oh, I pop in to grab all those subs and then peek out. You <laughs> but, know? How, but how do you approach the conversation? 
so the way that you do the way that i've done it because i've been i've been the axe man in both situations in that situation yeah i I have been i'm the guy that sits down that's just like (laughs) aids out there sharpening (laughs) yeah i'm that guy it's weird to think about but i am that guy um uh but basically we sit down and say like here's the deal um you know and and there have been countless warnings uh, up until this point like it's not it's not a surprise at this point it's very clear you know and it sits down and you say like listen we're not getting a lot out of uh, out of you being a part of the team uh you're not getting a lot out of us for being a part of the team there's just no back and forth there's no communication like we're just kind of we have this slot that's here where we're we're not getting anything out of it as the team and you're sitting here with the anxiety of the responsibility that you're not upholding. This is not working out either way. So it's like showcasing that it's better for everybody. If yeah, right, exactly. It's not a. It, it's, it's not like a you're situation. not getting anything out of this. Where it's it's and it's a stressful relationship in the first place. It's just like thing. this is what's going on here. Like maybe we should just call it what it is. And the two cases that I've oh, two. Yeah, I think it's been two. Um, not three. Technically three. Um, but, uh, the cases in which I've done that have been very much just like along the lines of like, I say that they go, yeah, yeah, you're right. I, uh, it's just, I don't think it's for me. And then I'd be like, Hey, it, there's, there's nothing, we have nothing against you. It's not because you're an awful person. We haven't luckily had that where they've just gone on a tirade and we're just like, get the hell out of here, you know? <laughs> um, but it's very much just identifying what the problem is looking at it from both sides, trying to work for a solution from the first, from the get-go. Do communication is key, which also means having the tough conversation of saying, you ain't pulling your weight. Like, more, we need, we have casters who stream to, uh, you know, I think C is like over a thousand people a lot of days. And, you know, we have people like, I was streaming under a hundred the other day, you know? And it's like, that's, that huge gap is not that big of a deal. What is a big, a big yeah. deal is the fact of the effort and time that you put into a team. And if you're not putting anything into the team, then there's no reason for you to be on the team. I think that that absolutely scales too. Um, just to touch on that quickly, if, if somebody's streaming to 1200 viewers every day, like that sounds like that sounds really big. And if they have absolutely no team participation, I don't want them on a team. I don't care what those numbers do. Yeah. If somebody's streaming to 50 people and they're not able to pull their weight in, in terms of leveraging their numbers for sponsored content, I don't care. I'll do double duty. If they're a team player, if they're a team participant, that yes, matters thank you. so much. <laughs> so, yes. so to that point, I feel like you can try to have a calm and rational conversation with somebody who's on the outs. And to that, to that uh, earlier point is trying to see from both perspectives and trying to talk about it in we're in relation to in regard to both perspectives like what it's like for that other person and why it's probably a better situation for everybody to make that make that kind of split but it's not an easy conversation to have it never will be nope. yeah but honesty is, is the most important thing i mean that just connects the communication at the end of the day so um psychonaut is our next uh oh, question God. asker uh, what's the ideal number of casters you'd recommend for a new team starting out? I would just say like one other person at least. Like just start somewhere oh, yeah. with an ideal small, number I would say. is exactly six point three. <laughs> six point three people. Yeah. Okay. Is this like the nuclear family? Like, two point like five. Yeah, exactly, yeah precisely. <laughs> two point four. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I would say uh I mean so Logo said at least one other person. Absolutely. My suggestion was don't go above five. Don't go above yeah. five. That's, any, that seems fine. Any more than that initially, and if you're new to streaming especially, is going to be way <laughs> too unwieldy for you. I think in the in the in the four to six range, I think that sounds really good. I think that sounds great. So if if I'm saying a four to six range, I mean I guess I would have to say five right there in the middle. I think five might be closer to an ideal. There's probably not a right answer. There are definitely wrong answers. Yeah. I mean, if it's your first time forming a team, like it's always helpful to form something with someone else so that there's like, you create a vision together and create a set of goals. Uh, And then you say over and over again, was using that word vision, which is, that's my, that is, I love vision. I love that idea. But, and so you guys started with, with four, 
For yes. us, we. St- I don't know who you're pointing to. It was, it was my, to, 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 to to you, obviously, the person okay. who can see my finger. <laughs> Markstrom. Um, yeah, so we, we started with four. And uh, in all honesty, I sent out six messages. And uh, two, just, two people, you know, had other things going on that they were yeah. in the middle of. And it just wasn't going to work out for them. And, um, you know, and I've discussed, you know, I still... The thing is, is like like uh, a quite quite a few of you have mentioned is like there is, there is such a thing as like extended community, right? There's no there's no reason no, nobody's excluded as a result of not being on the team. We still there's still massive numbers of people that we are very very close with. We all like as a team host them regularly and raid them and just yeah. like they're very they're very close to us and they're they're friends, you know and. Um, a uh, stream team doesn't define that by by any means, but mm-hmm. I think as far as like a starting number, again, that's defined by your vision. Sure. Like if you really just want a, if you are new and you don't want responsibility and you want to just create a network of people that you think like the thing is, is like you probably don't have a ton of broadcasting friends to begin with. So like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with casting a wide net if you don't want a whole lot of responsibility to begin with. You don't want to work too closely with people, but just some like a group of people that you have something in common with, whether it's a game or a genre. Or there's a fantastic like small, point. Small broadcasters within like the same genre or game can really you know cross pollinate with one another and really help each other's broadcasts if you know if they all frankly give give a damn you know and that's that's all it really takes oftentimes is that like one um, cohesive factor and that's fine. And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I wouldn't, I would say let, again, let your vision define it. You know what I mean? Like also define what you are willing to put into it. You know what I mean? Like if you are really, if you, if you have a good amount of experience and you feel comfortable with it. And I mean, it took me, I mean, I, it took me two and a half years and over a year uh, of being a partnered broadcaster for me to sit there and think, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing now. Not really. And <laughs> welcome and, to screaming, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly. And, and it's just like, I think I can, I think I can try and put this together and have it be successful and give something back to these people that are giving me their time and putting faith in me to be able to create something that's beneficial for all of us. And I think that's really important. So, um, you know, that I think, I think if you're at that stage or, or you're getting to that stage and you feel like you have a good amount of experience, you really want to dedicate a good amount of time to others and have them dedicate time to you, then small, absolutely four to six. Mm-hmm. But for somebody who's really just starting out, if you don't, if you feel like there isn't a team out there that's already there for you, or you're not like being invited, cause like we can say, join us, big team but like you still have to be invited right you still have to create that connection if that's not working out for you and you have a group of people that like are kind of maybe like towards the bottom of a game echelon like in the the tier of twitch right like if you are if you are in like the sub 10 digits you know for whatever game it may be there's massive power in supporting each other and um, you guys will end up having so much more in common with one another and feel so much better about like each other's growth as you progress rather than rather than trying to join you know maybe something that's just already massive and you're just lost in so yeah that's a great point very well said um like everyone asks uh what's for for each one of you the most important trait of a strong stream team let me point back to the beginning is communication. Uh, communication. <laughs> communication. Which which we did talk about, you know, to 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 an extent earlier. It's it, it's it's easy enough to just say the word communication, and it is absolutely true. But we we did outline some ways in which um it's why it's valuable and is sort of how to think about organizing it a little bit. Um uh, yeah. The other thing I was gonna say with communication is a small thing, is basically make sure that you are well okay a a strong stream team that communicates well but that isn't uh communicating and having the tough discussions is still not a good team completely Uh, agree you have to be able to like i have to be able to call my teammates out on the bullshit they're doing and they (laughs) have to call me out on my bs yeah have to be able to do that and you, each one of you has to sit there and go, 
yeah, you know, nope, you're, you're right. You're right. Or, or, or no, I, what are you talking about? This isn't this, like, this is or this. something to consider yeah. or thank you for your input. You know, something along yeah. those lines. Yeah, I knew Rob was going to okay. speak up during that. You're wrong, <laughs> sir. You're always wrong. Stop hogging my Twitter video or uh, uh, pictures. I think to be a little bit maybe more specific, um, I think that for me, the most important stra- trait of a strong stream team is putting in the same amount of thought and effort to solve your teammates' problems as you do. Sure. Your own. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really big one. It's just because that allows you to actually use your skill sets um, in, in a way that, like, that person may just not be equipped to handle. Like, that they, maybe they just don't have the same experience in that, whatever area that may be. And so, again, com- communicative wise, you know, you are, it's important for you to be able to um, express the problems that you're having and feel comfortable sharing them with your teammates. But again, like your teammate has to be there and, and put that same thought, effort, and, and time. And again, it's like that is a massive commitment. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, yeah. right. I will give you the same, you know, the same kind of effort that I put into my own things to try and help each other. And that, has really been like what has defined our team and helped us all break through barriers and plateaus is because we can pull that pull that um, experience. So I think an extension of that too is sort of a balance. It, a consistent thing with with streaming itself is being able to balance the personal and the professional because our brands are also ourselves. And when when the brand isn't doing very well, when our streams aren't doing well very well, we take that personally, right? So the Balancing all these things out. Same thing with our relationship yeah. with other people. I can have really close friends where a business element falls through, but part of managing being a streamer is making sure that that does not hinder that friendship. Same thing in, you know, in, in all the directions. You don't have to be best friends with everybody that you're doing business with in some way. To that sort of point, uh, I think the ability to give honest but empathetic critique and receive it is also very important for being on a team so then you can help each other grow without feeling like somebody's like smeared poop on your face like every time they're like oh hey you should probably think about changing this thing with the position of your mic because it gets in the way of the we can't really see the you know it's taking up too much did you consider this other thing oh man i saw that thing you did right and and not going like no that's my personal identity that you're attacking instead going like oh yeah i mean i should probably consider that and, and see what that is like and also not going like oh yeah well you do the other right balancing these things in your communication to the benefit of everybody and making sure that you can you can receive that that critique yourself is also very useful with a team. Yeah. These are people who know you and your broadcast better than anybody else on the surface and behind the scenes. Nobody's better equipped to inform you how to change and what to consider. And likewise with you with you to them. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day when you form like a tight knit stream team like but I think what each of us have based on how we've described it today, like there is a level of trust that needs to happen. And like being able to admit like when you're having those downs, which are not fun to talk about, which are really suck to admit. But like when you're struggling with something like like that is what your team is for. Like that is yeah. like to just help no. you keep your head up and talk Takes about to make a stream. You. Yep. And it's just, it's not easy. And it's like, when you know, like having talks like that is is never easy to admit. Like, you know, especially when like someone on your team is like killing it, getting tons of subs and stuff. And then you're like, Ooh, yeah. well, like, Ooh, you know, that's a tough I'm one. in a slump <laughs> right welcome now. To, it's, welcome it's to like to the hardest that. part of streaming, which is, which is figuring out how to not compare yourself to others. Oh. I am when you're on a team, it's streamer. hard to do that. Do you know that nightmare? <laughs> yeah. Are you still dealing with it? Because I am. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But it's it's really hard not to. And especially with a team that's so close knit, you know, like it's just like, holy crap, so and so's killing it. They were below me like a, a month ago. What the mm-hmm. hell am I doing wrong? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Don't make those hierarchy comparisons below me, above me kind of thing. Like that's the that's the has in the first place. Because that day that you're up, wonderful, feels great. You ain't gonna stay there. Never happens. Does not I happen. Think, 
And with a stream team, I think that can be one of like the, the more dangerous aspects of a team is where you become sure. like competitive with your teammates sure. and you're like comparing yourself and you're feeling bad because, you know, this person's been doing better and let's just like, so, and that's just like something with streaming in general, but especially when you work closely with people and like you are watching their numbers. Like I know how my teammates are doing all the time. I may not know how like, you know, Hunter is doing all the time, but I know my teammates. So, um, just that mindset can be toxic. So just absolutely be careful with that. Um, our next question comes from the T style who says, how do you deal with inclusion and play dates as a team with larger numbers, but new games that don't easily support that. That I have no idea you guys. So um, the question is, how do we deal? How do we play games that don't accommodate to if, large group numbers? Yeah. If your team has yeah. like, you know, like 12 people, as you mentioned, um, there are obviously games that, you know, you can't mm -hmm. fit all 12 people on. Games so are like, limited to like three. How do, choose, how do you choose like, you know, who plays on that day? You know, if you have a specific day, like you said, Tuesdays, your team plays, you know. Um, I would, uh, go ahead, Mark. Sorry. No, I was just, I was just clarifying the question for you. Um, I would say for us, I mean, our, 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 our thing is team Tuesday. Right. And so if, uh, the way that we have it is we have, we have tw uh, 10 casts and, uh, we have a team Tuesday has a minimum of four people that will attend and a maximum of eight of the, the eight, the, the eight there is kind of flexible, but the eight is our high cap notice. That's not the amount of people or cast yeah. that we have. And there's a reason for that because any bigger than that gets really unwieldy any lower than four. It's not really a team of, well, that's not true. It's, it's not a team Tuesday to us. It is a team event, but it's not our team Tuesday. So uh, I mean, how do you have voice comms with like 18 people? <laughs> Hi, anxiety. You're back. Good to see you again. Uh, you know, but I would say biggest thing, you don't play the games that don't support them. Sure. Or you just play like with like, with like a, just a group. Like even the games, like if you had an ARC server, you still wouldn't like, wouldn't do a team That's true. all 12 people yeah. that would just be insane like at least you wouldn't have them all in comms anyway so mm -hmm. uh for the sake of putting on a stream that people can actually follow like there is a cap on that anyways so um i would say as, as long as like the like the community is getting a little bit of everyone in some way regularly i think yeah. that's like the only thing that you gotta balance out you don't need to be like Okay, everyone needs. We can only find games <laughs> yeah. that fit every single person, or like you know. Yeah, it's not Montessori kindergarten where like you literally have to get everybody participating at yeah. some at like in every single right. Yep. But yeah. I, I completely agree with that point. I think our team, the flagship, uh, it's usually like a kind of a first come first serve thing, and then we'll just talk about it if if five people want to play a four player game, and it's like, oh well, I do have something else that I can do anyway. Okay, yep. good because the other person doesn't. Like, that's the thing that they really, okay, well, that's easy enough to just back away from. It's, you know, tagging in Discord, who wants to do the thing on this day, the people who speak up, you know, it's just like, it's it's kind yeah. of as, as straightforward as that. Uh, at that's the right same right. time, I do think it is important to make sure that, um, like, this is, so this is, this is an important one for me. I am not uh, much of a multicaster, which is a big consideration uh, about whether or not to get on the team initially. I, I loved everybody on there. And I was like, oh, but they do all of this multicasting. I'm not very good at it. Like it's one of these things that I assume that I can learn, but I get, the more I've been doing it with them, the better I've been getting. That's how learning kind of, kind of works with that. But it needed me, uh, and this is to, much to, to, to Markstrom's point earlier too, uh, many times throughout the, the show today is uh, being committed to that vision of the, of the team and going like, okay, I know that I'm uncomfortable with it, but this is what the team does. And this is what I signed up for. So I'm going to jump on board into the multi stream. And I, I, I've got to make sure I'm doing it this often to make sure that I'm keeping pace with what the team itself needs. That's a grenade I got to fall on. So this, this, uh, this event, this is a game that I'm willing to play. I'm not the literal worst at it. So I'll jump onto it. Yep. For us in particular, like we, you know, as as a four man squad originally, that was really easy. Like that was perfect. We yeah. just met every week and there was no issue and we can play every game and great. Like there's a couple of like, you know, single or like two player games, but not a ton. And so we really didn't have anything to worry about when we added a fifth. 
um, that was like, oh shit, we didn't think about this <laughs> uh, <laughs> to an extent, right? Well, so, so we, but instantly, I mean, it wasn't any issue. We instantly said, all right, LP, our helper, like, let's make a table uh, of specific games that are like four plus. Cause most of the time, like we want everybody there for us personally, like we want everybody included on a weekly basis. We don't want somebody to, cause I mean, like none of us are in particular variety casters. None of us, we all have our niche and we branch, but not like regularly, not like Loco does, you know, it's not, it's not quite the same. So that is our variety for a lot mm -hmm. of us that's that's that variety portion that's that little taste of something extra that i think all communities enjoy and yearn for especially if you're in a specific niche so we want to include everybody on that so seeking out specific games like we just recently did the hunter call of the wild which was incredibly fun and a really Wait, the hunter wild Close. i got played <laughs> i got played yeah <laughs> the um they just they just came out with like a new you know expansion that was that was enjoyable like it's like an african safari so that was super fun and then uh this week we're playing deceit which accommodates everybody mm, nice so yep. and it's a great game that's like really really fun for everybody involved and there there are options out there there are absolutely options out there and i just think like you know again think about what you want to accomplish and if you need to adapt in the sense of you know making a spreadsheet or table that has a bunch of games that accommodate everybody. And if, if somebody's not there that week, then you play a game that's specifically for. Like if somebody has yeah. something going on, that's when you throw in the four player game or whatever that you've been wanting to play. So I would, I would also say really quickly, as far as what kind of games to play, um, <clears throat> you know, depends on what you want. Um, but if you want to showcase who you are as a team and how you guys work together, and if you are just a group of friends who are, it's not about being competitive and like esports esque. You know, you're not out there to be the best um, or whatever at, at the video game, but you're there to play it, to be a group of friends for the laughs and all that stuff, which it sounds like most of the cases for us here it is. Play games that accentuate that. Games yeah. like, you know, like competitive, so highly competitive games are not great for that. You know, your, your esport games are, they can be fun, but they take a lot of focus. You want to play yeah. games that are just, they're just, they're basically like couch co-op games, you know, where you just sit yeah. back and like Gang Beasts and Jackbox and, you know, I Human Fall Flat, you know, like all of those goofy games. They are really goofy and they don't have a ton of content single player, but my God, multiplayer, they just, they shine. Gang Beasts is a big one for us. It's, you just, you, everybody jumps in, we're all just screaming. You can't hear anybody, but you know, beards are getting caught in gears and stuff. And then everybody's just crying, laughing. And yep. it's fluid. Yeah, we recently easy. did Overcooked 2, which mm, requires yeah. a lot of communication and teamwork. And it was a mess. And it was, <sighs> See, that's was almost crying. like you've almost gone so far into the like <laughs> out of focus that you've wrapped back around to the fun because they're like, yeah. oh my God, they're going to work together on something? This is going to be a disaster. I cannot <laughs> wait, you know? And it was. It was great. Nope. Um, <laughs> Uh, our next question comes from Lucid Fox, who asks, if someone is a single game streamer, would you recommend they find a team with interest in that game slash category of a game or find people who best fit their personality? For, for me, like we, so obviously a lot of our friendships stem from the fact that we were in the same realm on Twitch, right? Like Deadly and I have been playing games together for years. Um, same with Pebro. Uh, Monster Deface comes from a background of uh, originally mobile games like Clash of Clans. And now he is like one of the faces of Fortnite. And none of us play Fortnite and our communities don't play Fortnite, but his personality and the way that his community is formed yeah. it is incredibly similar to ours. And that is the, that's that binding glue 100% is is that, you know, and I think, it, I think it definitely is on a stream to stream or stream team to stream team basis and uh, what you want to do with it. But I, for us, it's very much so like community oriented. And honestly, we're at a point now where we have so many people that play the same stuff with the addition of cotton that 
it would be advantageous for us to diversify even more with like the next expansion. I don't think sure. like we've all this, we've all discussed this and internally it's just, we don't think it would be even necessarily, and it wouldn't be nearly as beneficial or wise to like pull from somebody. Cause there's just so many, there, there, the bottom line is there's so many great broadcasters out there. There really are. And so many people who are community oriented who do it full time because to me like that's that's the that's the formula for long term success mm-hmm. and if that's our defining glue then like there's no reason to limit ourselves you know what i mean and diversity is awesome so i think community and personality would be primary there but i don't think that those are the standalone features i, I would i would see i would i would think i would say that um, at least if you're, if you're just talking about single game streamers, at least a similar genre, because I would think that even if the personalities and the communities are kind of the same, somebody who streams princess pony would not necessarily be a good fit with somebody who streams murder face death mob. Right. <laughs> I wish these were real games. I want well <laughs> these games right now. Hunter. I don't know. I was really going different extremes. Devs you know, of Twitch, listen up. I know. It, 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 hopefully Twitch integrated. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like even if they were run the same and had similar types of communities and similar types of engagement and similar personalities among the broadcasters, there would still be too much of a diversity between those two single games, the genres themselves, uh, that the types of people that were invited in, it would, it would be a clash somewhere in there. Um, so I, I assume if you're talking about single game broadcasters, personality would be first and foremost, but hopefully those single games are somewhat similar. You also have to obviously account for the fact that they're not going to be playing those single games their entire for, forever. At some point, that's going to get cut off. At some point, they're going to try something else. They're going to branch out. And it's probably going to be within the same genre if they're going to another single game. So keeping that the genres related somehow is going to allow that team, I think, to have more consistency over time. I would, or value. I, would I would bounce off of that and say that, you know, personality is primary and having, hmm. so having, having similar genres is good, but I think would be even better than that is potentially having if you don't have similar genres, having casters that are different genres, but willing to try new things <laughs> with sure. each other and experience that together. Cause nothing is more, nothing is more bonding than when one teammate says, listen, when Rom comes to me, he goes, Hey, listen, you gotta try, you gotta try fishing simulator 2018. How am I going to like fishing simulator? <laughs> You think about my cast, what is this? I ended up playing it for two weeks, right? And that was great. It was great. We did a whole thing out of it, right? And Well, in this case, they can't hear you scream and go to the other side of the leg. There's no open mic. Yeah, right, right. Um, But yeah, I mean, like, I would say that's a big thing in the sense of, in the sense of having the willingness to try new things, even if they are in different genres, because that is a huge moment that you as a team can capitalize on yeah. and say like, yo, let's experience this together. This is going to be a catastrophe, but I got you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say too, is like, if you're a stream team that wants to do community based stuff together, like if it doesn't matter what games you're playing, as long as you're, you're willing to stream different games and willing to stream games together. Like, I mean, you could be a Hearthstone streamer, and that's what does well for you. And if you only want to play Hearthstone, you only want to stream that because you know anything else is going to be not great for your numbers. Then, like being on a team that plays like shooters is not probably going to work out. So yeah. uh, it's 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 not ever like either or. It's just kind of like like a blend of what everyone has, has said pretty much. Um, Working Chef asks, I'm ramping up my cooking team. I want to help other cooking streamers grow and such. Is there a team with more than 12 people that work well? Um, I think the first one that comes to mind is uh, Meg Kaylee's Sin Squad. That I think they have a ton of people on their team. They do have a lot of people, yeah. Um, if you're asking for like examples of, of teams that... Uh, how big is Main Menu? Main Menu... They're... At this point, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Casper... I don't know if Casper's still here, but 
Um, Meg Kaylee's uh, counted uh, ten. Oh, you're ten. Okay. Yeah, it's Make hard. Haley's it's hard to go. Big. I mean, okay, so if Sin you Squad, one hundred and fifty-one members. Right. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the difference there. And I don't know the inner workings of Meg Stream. I don't know or Stream Team. Um, but what I could infer would be that it's not in a negative way, but it is fairly top down. It's a matter of, mm. hey guys, this month we're going to be doing this. We'd like to see all of you guys participate in this. And we're going to get as many people as we can, and it's Could not a matter of economics. Like, <laughs> Jeez, Morag, what are you doing? All right, um, but I mean, in that sense, like it's very top down in the sense of you know the staff and the organizers in the top you know crust of that kind of says, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lead you guys. We're gonna right. lead these smaller streamers because I know a lot of the streamers on Sin Squad are fairly smaller streamers. I'm wrong with that. They're just smaller streamers, and so they getting the guidance. Getting that guidance from a big streamer is really beneficial. On top of that, Meg is also on main menu, I believe. Yeah. I think so, so that even more gives me a, an indication that um, the staff of Sin Squad leads the rest, and main menu is the team that Meg is on, where she is part of a cohesive team that works right. as a unit. There's two Equal different balance. styles of teams right there. So if you're that looking one person is a part of, which I think is a good takeaway too. Yep. You can so, be a part of multiple teams at once. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we we on our team, we have a thing where we you can be a part of a, another team. We do require though that it is your primary team and sure. you throw the flag up and you throw the name up uh, uh unless you're doing a specific team like Ramadan. It's an open relationship, but you're coming on with me. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> That's the weirdest way to put it, but it works. <laughs> I, I do metaphors. <laughs> you also have those mega teams, uh, Dreamers Connected and Team Eevee or something, but I'm not familiar with how, mm. like how integrated those teams are, how a part of you feel with those teams. I'm not, I'm not sure to be honest, um, but those are like mega streams that like stream teams that anyone can join. So it could be a good starting point if you're trying to figure out what you want from a team and you want to find people that have a drive to work together. I'm sure you can find people that will stand out from those communities as a starting point. Uh, you can easily find them on Twitter. Yep. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that looks like that's going to be it for us today, guys. Uh, I think we've answered everyone's questions. What a fantastic uh, show. Yeah. We're going to do some shout outs here in a sec. I switched my overlays. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being on the show. Markstrom, where can we find you? What are you doing? What are your plans? Um, so I am on Twitch every single day of the week. I switch weekend days off. So uh, six days a week, uh, starting at 7 a.m. Eastern. And uh, you'll probably catch me playing either Escape from Tarkov or Scum. Uh, those are my two main games. Uh, but uh, usually towards the end of broadcast is when we swap on over to something else that I feel like trying that day. Um, other than that, I've been creating a lot of YouTube content. That's been a massive endeavor for me lately, um, mostly for those two games in particular. So if you're interested in those games, if you want any guide content, youtube.com slash TV. And I like your schedule too, because uh, I get to watch you for the last hour before I go to sleep. You have, uh, <laughs> you have, just, you have just begun as I'm about to go out to bed. Beautiful. Uh, what about you, Goobers? Wait, what's it? I was going to say one more thing is that uh, if you wanted to catch the Marksman playdates, those, ah. those are on Thursdays right now at 11 a.m. Eastern if you wanted to see the team get together. so Yeah, feel free to link your team site or Twitter, whatever you want, in the chat because you guys have sure. mod power. So link. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned stuff. that. That's a big plug. That's an important one. Oh, no. I so. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank you very much for having me on. I really enjoyed discussing stream teams. It's been great awesome goobers hi i'm goobers 515 i'm that loud guy um i stream five ish six ish days a week um i do not stream like hunter or the rest do because i physically cannot because my energy output is like an 11 and my body is ready for oh a six <laughs> so um, I uh, I give about uh, about five or six hours, uh, five days a week. I'm on a role playing show on Friday nights. Uh, Team Tuesday for Would You Kindly? If you guys want to see 
If you guys want to see what Would You Kindly is all about, if you want to know everything about Would You Kindly in one broadcast that usually lasts about three hours, three to four hours, you go watch Team Tuesday. Team Tuesday has been going on. We haven't missed a show for over a year. Um, and uh, right wow. this, week is our, this week is our off week. Uh, last week was Domestic Dan. The, week, the two weeks before that was me. Uh, this next week, I believe, will be Mav. Uh, we'll keep you essentially guys- alternate the host? We do. The way that we do that okay. is we alternate the host, and what we do is we push all of our communities together and force them into a new, new caster and say, hey, look, this person's awesome, so is their community. And we try to, you know, uh, do something for subs that usually ends up being ridiculous or something that makes us all write a story together. It's weird. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, go, go, go look it up. We've written two stories. They're like three pages long each. Anyway. It's um it, it's not but anyway so uh <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so team tuesday uh next tuesday will be the next team tuesday keep an eye on the twitter at uh twitter.com slash would you kindly um the twitch team i don't remember if it's like twitch.tv slash team slash wyk dash tv if you want to link the twitter you can it's, link that up in that. the chat we'll, it might we'll be easier. Uh, they gotta do a little work at refining the twitch team pages uh well but they kind of, they, kind of don't, they don't they don't do a lot right now there you go. follow the twitter it there retweets we got a twitter bot that retweets everything um all oh, cool. of the streams and stuff it just does it automatically so um but anyway you can find me at goobers 515 on twitch and twitter um and uh also on table stories on friday that's uh jay whack and brad wodo's role-playing group um i do a lot of role-playing shows as well so that's me i'm the loud guy turn your volume down if you come into my stream yeah smart moves pro tip (laughs) hunter i am the hunter wild I am completely drunk on Spider-Man right now. I finished it up last night, hundred percent on the hardest difficulty. And it's just, and I'm going to dive back into it today. I can't, I can't, I can't stop. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash Thunder Wild. Um, oh, and on Twitter, it's got the, I do. I know. Absolutely. I mean, it's like directly an eyedropper of Spider-Man <laughs> webbing. I, that doesn't work out. I try. <laughs> Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Hunter Wild TV and a massive shout out to my team, the flagship, who, as I was pointing out uh, earlier, earlier in the in the stream, took went above and beyond to get me on board specifically by doubling, uh, literally doubling up their meetings to do. They, they were used to meet once a week. Now they meet twice a week in order to accommodate my specific schedule. They are god dear broadcasters that i respect and look up to to no end and we have two upcoming events together that are big that i can't talk about <laughs> oh we're I doing that too all right cool that's what we're planning come on <laughs> we're doing that all right cool 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 that's no that's just me the flagship it's the the gets me confused with myself the flagship tv that's the one boy you what about you loco let's move this from <laughs> me as quickly as possible oh, okay um i'm loco <laughs> hi hello uh you can find me on twitch.tv slash loco i am also playing spider-man uh mm. and and looking the playing- part yeah, I did a cosplay on Friday, and I grew some muscles, and now they're gone. <laughs> and um, and then I'm doing a Tomb Raider cosplay this Friday <sighs> for the new Tomb Raider. So uh, nice. my cosplays are literally minimal effort and 100% <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, I really like doing them, though. I've been liking doing them a lot, so I'm excited. I was thinking about cosplaying um, for Tomb, Tomb Raider this, this Friday, too. You should. you got the hair. Bad, I'll try. The ponytail. That's the yep. That's the that was the thinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can find me on twitter.com slash loco two five two five. Uh and Spider Man Tomb Raider, that's kind of my games right now. Uh and last but not least, guys, if you guys enjoyed this content, follow here us on uh Twitch, the Twitch uh streamers for our channel. <laughs> Sentences are hard. I have infected uh, you with my wording. <laughs> Dang it, Hunter. <laughs> my English has gone downhill. Uh, but you can follow us here on Twitch. Uh, we also have a Discord server, XWH Boy Discord. Uh, and um, we are on, you can check out our website if you guys are looking for some more content about streaming. If you need help streaming, 
Uh, we had tons of videos on YouTube, literally like tons of hours of awesome shows like this uh, with awesome people that know a lot about what we're talking about. So definitely check out those on YouTube. Uh, and thank you, Chef, for linking up the stream team. Team Catalyst, uh, we are, we did do Wednesdays. We did like What Face Wednesdays. We're actually probably switching to Saturdays in the near future because uh, it's better for us. So uh, I would say follow us on Twitter if you guys want. I don't even know if this is the right link. <laughs> we're all really prepared for our links. There we go. Okay, that was good. Out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, thank you guys for being on the show. Uh, Marshram, Goobers, thank you guys. Uh, Wonderful. It's been a, a great show. So. It was incredibly insightful. Thanks for inviting us, guys. Sure. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week on the stream scene. I will be here tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time for the stream doctor. So uh, if you guys want to join me for that show, that's basically tomorrow 4 p.m. You enter your, your channel and I will just, I literally just review channels. So if you're streaming and you need some direct feedback on your stream uh you definitely don't want to miss out tomorrow seriously so. get into the discord participate in this if you want professional critique on your streams do not be afraid of it jump in dive in this is where you make great strides in creating content yeah so thank you guys for being here you guys are already like miles ahead just by taking the time to watch the show every week so thank you guys we'll see you guys soon have a wonderful rest of your monday night uh thanks for tuning into the stream scene bye everybody